Hi everybody, Scott here, and for this episode of Let's Open, I've got a cylindrical Windows 10 computer with tablet level specs. Not everything that comes from China is crap, but I'm going after the stuff that most likely is. I'll test it and then open it up to find out what's inside. I'm very excited about this particular thing from China because from what I understand, this is the world's first cylindrical computer. That's right. The Chinese came up with it and it's just brilliant. I mean, what better form factor can there be for a computer than a cylinder? I mean, it makes dough flat, it allows policemen to render criminals unconscious. The cylinder has been with us for years. It even keeps your toilet paper in shape. So I, I give them a lot of credit. I, oh, what's that? App, oh, uh, app, okay. Anyway, here it is. and. There's one interesting thing right off the bat that I noticed is that in the ad it says that it has a 1.8 gigahertz processor. It's a Baytrail Atom and on the box it says uh, 1.33 gigahertz turbo to 1.8. So a little bit misleading in the ad but I mean kind of what do you expect. Um, otherwise the specs on the box seem to line up with what the ad says so at least that's a good start. Um, this box is actually pretty nice, by the way. It has sort of a textured, almost faux leather finish. Uh, this thing is supposed to have 32 gigs of RAM. It comes with Windows 10 and, I'm sorry, did I say 32 gigs of RAM? 32 gigs of flash storage, two gigs of RAM. Uh, it's supposed to be DDR3-133 and, oh, wow, here it is. And it, it's a lot lighter than I thought it would be. I mean, I don't know why it would be heavy because it uh, doesn't have much in it, really. But um, it's light, it's actually made of aluminum, I thought, on the ad it was plastic. I don't think it even said what material it was made out of. So uh, aluminum is actually a nice touch. It actually has a reasonable quality feel to it. I'm kind of surprised here. But uh, oh, you know what, just to make things complete. It really wouldn't do without one of these. There. Now it's a complete product. Um, of course, it says Windows 10 on the top. Uh, apparently it does come with Windows 10, and I was a bit suspicious of that at first because I thought that, you know, Windows 10 costs like over 100 bucks if you try to buy it uh, to install on your computer without going through the upgrade process, but apparently Microsoft uh, volume licensing pricing, it's something like either free to OEMs or, um, or like 15 bucks if you're just using like the tablet version, the really stripped down version. Um, this little box HDMI cable, that's kind, of a, that's kind of a nice touch because I didn't really expect it to have an HDMI cable. And uh, power supply. Now, it did say in the ad that it came with a European style power supply, which it does. I am in the United States, if you couldn't tell from my accent, or as I consider it lack thereof. Um, ooh, I thought this was a, an American to, North American to European adapter, which it does look like it is, but um, it's not really capturing these prongs terribly well. Uh, I think I might just have to modify this adapter real quick and we'll power this thing up and take a look. Oh, also I'll get a monitor. But you know what, before that, um, yeah, it's got this really creepy HAL 9000 thing going with uh, for it where it has a camera on the front. Now, I'm not really clear on the point of a camera on the front of what's supposed to be like, I guess a desktop mini PC type of thing or an HTPC computer because I mean, I guess if you have this next to your television pointing back at you, kind of makes sense, but it's just a weird place to have a camera. I don't know how much use that would be. Uh, so the front's got the camera, it's got a little microphone hole and the power button. Back is uh, fairly respectable with, I have it upside down there, um, four USB ports. I think they're only USB 2.0, there's no USB 3 on this thing. Ethernet port, which I believe is 10100. Um, in fact, I think the box says it's 100 megabit. Uh, yeah, 10100. Um, it's got built-in Wi-Fi though, ABGN I think, um, HDMI port, TF card slot, which is basically an SD card without the S, uh, and a headphone jack, and of course the power plug. Um, it takes DC 5 volts, so even if I can't use this power adapter, I'll figure something out. I got plenty of power adapters laying around. So one second while I modify this. Now, modifying this should be no real trick. Um, in theory, it should just have a couple of like metal uh, pins inside, which if, yep, that's exactly what it has. And if I bend them a little tighter, they should, in theory, capture these prongs just fine. 
yeah, you can see that it, that it will. So um, yeah, just bend those in. And I don't know if the adapter was just, I guess it was just poorly made. Cause it looks like they were bent a little out of whack or I don't know if there's a couple different sizes of European power adapter, but I kind of want to use this power adapter rather than my own just to test it out. I mean, who knows if it's any good or not. You'll see, maybe it'll burst into flames when I, when I plug it in. That would at least be interesting. One interesting thing about it, I mean, this is actually a decent quality HDMI cable by feel. Um, can't really know for sure until, you know, it goes the distance. Um, looks like a very light plating of gold on the connectors, which, again, surprising. And it even has these, these uh, caps, which you only find on at least reasonably quality, uh, reasonable quality HDMI cables. All right, quite a lot has happened uh, since I cut away. I have more than just the computer set up here. Obviously, I got a keyboard and mouse, you know, and a monitor right here, which only I can see, but I'm gonna be capturing the footage from the computer using a capture card, so you'll be able to see it in full HD resolution if there's anything interesting to show you. I uh, also have this tough book here, which is running Wireshark. And Wireshark is a packet capture uh, software package. The reason for that is, I don't know, call me paranoid, but this thing came direct from China and I know even, you know, reputable manufacturers like uh, HP and Dell load all sorts of, I wouldn't necessarily call it all adware, but bloatware anyway, on their computers. And so I'm suspicious of this little uh, Chinese gizmo. Like maybe there's some adware on there, maybe there's some malware, maybe there's something really nasty on there. Uh, so it's not hooked up directly to the internet, it's actually hooked up to my guest network, which doesn't have much of anything on it except for this right now, um, via this little box here, which is something I made years ago. Uh, basically, it passes a 10 megabit or 100 megabit uh, network signal through these two ports, and then it has two taps, which tap onto the uh, transmit of either port. So in other words, it's sort of like a vampire tap on the ethernet cable. Totally outside ethernet specifications, completely not allowed to do that, but it actually does work. It works fine. Uh, so the advantage of this is that this little computer is hooked up to the Toughbook via this box, but it can't receive anything from the Toughbook. So even if it had some kind of malware on it that could uh, you know, jump from computer to computer via the network, it can't really communicate with the uh, tough book. It won't know it's there because it can send signals out the tough book will never respond. Um, and like I said, from there it goes to my router firewall and then to the internet without be having access to any other computers in my house. Now, like I said, I'm probably being really paranoid about this, but let's investigate and let's see if this thing decides to call home when I turn it on because we'll be able to see all the network traffic that it transmits. It will have a valid network connection though. All right, so, I got the uh, oh, North American to European power adapter hooked up, and this is the first time I'm powering it on, so this might not even work, and this whole thing might be for, for naught. But uh, there we go. And ah, there's a blue light in front, which just turned red. Uh, it is making some various announcements on the network already. Uh, just spanning tree protocol, which is kind of weird. Why is it transmitting that? Okay. All right, it's actually coming up with a MAC address of uh, an Action TE or Action T or I don't know what that means, um, but that's what it's translating the MAC address as. So uh, I'm assuming red LED means off. I guess I'll turn it on and we'll see what happens. Hmm, nothing, nothing on the monitor. Uh, let me hold it for longer press. Ah, there we go, light just turned blue. Probably just needs a long press to turn it on, and oh, it's uh, I don't know if you can hear, listen to this. The, the sound coming over the HDMI port is just pure static. Oh, wait, okay, that was just during the BIOS screen. Um, all right, riveting, I know, American Megatrends BIOS, which. I wonder if that's a legit BIOS or not. Wow, okay, booted right into uh, the Windows 10 welcome setup, United States English. Uh, I'll leave it at Pacific time. I'm actually on the East Coast, but who cares? It's not really relevant. Oh, enter the product key. Product key. I did not see a product key on the box. I didn't really expect to see one either. Uh, da -da. Nothing on the outside. Any, and there's no, uh, I mean, needless to say, there's no 
certificate of authenticity on this uh, from Microsoft. Um, no serial number, as a matter of fact, at all. And it's doing quite a bit of network activity. I'll look at that later and report back on uh, what it's doing on the network at the end of the video, because it's uh, gonna be quite a lot to look through. But um, there's no other paperwork or documentation in here. It's just a couple of uh, padded dividers to hold the computer in place. And uh, nothing in the inside of the lid. And I'm gonna assume there's nothing like custom printed in this manual. All right, well, apparently it's an unactivated copy of Windows, which is kind of a cheat, it doesn't say that. Um, so I guess I was wrong about the volume licensing thing. Apparently this is just, they didn't bother licensing at all. So I'm gonna click uh, do this later. The legal stuff we will accept mindlessly as everyone does. I'm going to use express settings because uh, well, whatever. This isn't a computer that I'm going to be using on a day-to-day -day basis. This is kind of just for the video, and if I like it, maybe I'll use it for something. Um, one thing uh, we're going to do later is, of course, take it apart. Now, by the way, this does have a small fan in it, according to the listing, and I can feel it vibrating a little bit. It's definitely not a high-quality fan, but what do you expect? Um, it's getting the critical updates. So obviously, it's going to be talking to Microsoft a lot right now. Um, even though it has a fan, I can't really feel the airflow. And right now I'm going to show you a picture from the listing of how the fan's positioned inside this case. And as you can see, it doesn't look like it actually, I mean, they show arrows of airflow going through the computer, but the fan doesn't look like it would actually cause air to flow through the computer. And indeed, um, cupping both ends of it where there's vent holes on top and vent holes on the bottom. I can't feel any air moving through it, but I do feel the vibration. And that's gotta be the fan because this does not have a hard drive. It has a uh, flash memory. I wouldn't go so far as to call it an SSD. It's pretty much an SSD, but it's also probably complete crap. Um, so while Windows is getting itself set up for the first time, I'm just going to uh, flip through the manual here. Uh, da -da, specifications. Pretty much match what's in the auction. Um, again, they call it a 1.8 gigahertz processor. I, I'm pretty sure it's a 1.8 turbo, but still, that's not bad. The front, the behind. Ooh, it's actually a color printed manual uh, with fairly nice printing. How to em how to enter into sleeping mode or power off? Yeah, fair enough. Yeah, really not much interesting in here. It's actually a mostly instructions on how to use Windows 10, which, you know, is pretty simple in the first place. Uh, speedtest.net is taking a long time to load. I'm assuming that's the computer being a little slow. Let's see. I know, I know, control, shift, escape. I use the mouse, sue me. Um, always more details, always, always more details. Let's see how busy the CPU is. All right, the CPU is pretty busy. It's actually, I guess, um, maybe, the, yeah, it's a 1.33 gigahertz, but it is, uh, according to this, hitting uh, up near its turbo speed. So it's at 1.55 gigahertz right now. Uh, memory, so there's two gigabytes of RAM, 1.2 in use already just from the stock windows running uh, the Edge browser. Not all that cool. Um, oh my God, there's a lot of ads on here. I usually run an ad blocker, so this is kind of ridiculous. Um, hope I don't ever put ads on my video, because I guess that'll kind of stupid of me to say that. Oh, I'm going to have to remember to block out my public IP. Uh, da -da, okay. I mean, it's getting 60 megabit down. Now, that's being throttled by my internet speed. Oh, and it's also making the tough book go crazy with its capturing. Um, that's my internet speed's max. I just kind of want to make sure the network interface was actually capable of at least my internet speed, which it looks like it is, so that's good. Um, upstream's not going to fare too well, although they should get about 30 megabits, so 25, 26 is really not bad. All right, so the, the network interface is sufficient. So 21 gigs free of 28.2, so the base OS install really isn't too bad. Um, it doesn't look, let's see, it doesn't look like it came with any bloatware. Uh, I don't know. I actually honestly don't know if Candy Crush Soda Saga comes with Windows 10 by default. Does it? So, sure. Um, what I'm going to do is uh, cut here and install some uh, a performance testing application or two and just see how fast uh, this hardware is. So, be right back. 
As it turns out, I only ran past Mark's performance test because, let's face it, this hardware is not going to give massive performance in any case. The test is really just to see how good or bad the system is, and it's probably going to run about as fast as any system with a 1.33 GHz Bay Trail Atom anyway. One oddity about this computer that I didn't mention when showing you the specs is that it came with a 32-bit version of Windows 10 even though it has a 64-bit processor. I could understand this if it were an activated copy of Windows and they somehow got a good deal on the 32-bit version, but since it's free to download either unactivated version, this is kind of a head-scratcher. So if you're planning on running an application or driver that only has a 64-bit release, then you definitely need to reinstall. But hey, you could always install your favorite flavor of Linux instead. And done. Um, that took uh, quite a few minutes. And the computer is now fairly warm. Um, I wouldn't say hot, at least not on the outside. I mean, the inside, I got to imagine it's kind of hot. Um, one thing that I didn't notice before is that the vent holes on the bottom, um, these feet aren't very high. So when it's on the table, there's, of course, a little bit of an air gap down there, but it's not really much. I mean, even if this thing did have a fan blowing through it, there wouldn't be much airflow if it was sitting that way. You need some kind of really cradle for it so it sits uh, this way. I know there's a cradle like that for the Mac Pro, but probably not a custom cradle for this one. Anyway, uh, past mark rating 436.7, which, yeah, not that great. Um, I'm actually going to upload it, that's fine. Ah, computer model. Uh, that brings up an interesting point. This is just called the Intel Mini PC G2. Now, and actually, the uh, online ad, it wasn't even called the G2. It just said some arbitrary crap about the specifications. But um, why not enter that in? And, uh, yeah. I mean, that's going to be useless because this isn't a real computer. Uh, let's just see how it compares. So, uh, yeah, you can see it, it does not fare well. I mean, it's an Atom processor. Um, it actually, Passmark considers it a tablet because it's a tablet uh, CPU. Uh, graphics are absolute crap. You know, when I, when I was thinking about doing this review, I considered putting a couple of games on this computer and just trying to get them to play and, uh, and see what they were like. But frankly, I mean, with, uh, what was the available memory? Right, right now, the available memory is uh, 0.8. I mean, no, it's using 0.8, I'm sorry. But so it's like, there's very little RAM free right now. And uh, the graphics are obviously integrated into the CPU. They're gonna suck. It's really for tablets. This is really for productivity type uh, stuff, like just running Microsoft Word, doing some basic web browsing. Uh, all in all, not very impressive. Uh, I scrolled through it just now, so you can pause the video on uh, the summary. Um, I mean, uh, if you wanna look at the specs or what it's, uh, yeah. If you look at all this, uh, you can pause it at any point. I'm just going to scroll through real quick. 2D graphics mark. I mean, it, it's, of course, all crap. It's all crap. Uh, 3D, I mean, you could tell the 3D was going to be bad because the test uh, 3D rendering that it shows uh, while it's doing the test was just choppy. It looked, it was slow. As far as the disk goes, so... Um, yeah, it's, it does not compare favorably. Um, I'm familiar with this. I think this is a Western Digital Blue Drive right here. I think it's 7200 RPM. And you can see you got a score of 580, and that's compared to this computer, which has a score of 350. Like I said, I mean, it's technically like an SSD, but it's really more of a, a flash, uh, the flash storage on a thumb drive. Um, it's not SSD speeds by any means. Uh, here's a crucial uh, SSD. I mean, it clearly blows this out of the water. Um, and that is, I didn't even look at what section that was. This is general overall disk mark. I mean, sequential read, random read, and write, and all that stuff. It's all, it's all terrible. Um, it's a little better with random seek than uh, hard drives, for obvious reasons, but uh, it still gets creamed by any SSDs. So, yeah, I mean, this, this computer isn't meant for high performance, though. I mean, there's a hundred bucks. Which, you know, when you kind of think about it, is a little expensive because you can get $100 tablets, maybe, uh, I think you can actually find on AliExpress $200 tablets with roughly the same specs, but of course, those include a battery and a screen. And this, uh, you have to supply your own screen and, you know, I guess you could supply your own battery too if you really wanted to. 
They do note in the ad that it's great for portability, that it's in fact more portable, I think, than a laptop is what they said, which uh, is questionable because, I mean, you have to bring a monitor with it, so. All right, next I'm gonna take a look at some YouTube videos because uh, this isn't really any good for gaming. And I imagine a lot of people are gonna use this as an HTPC or some other type of little media computer. So here's an Ultra HD video from NASA. Uh, this will, of course, n won't do Ultra HD, it'll do 1080p. And, uh, oh my god. Look at how jittery that is. That is not uh, my capture card, that's actually what it looked like on screen. And if we look at the uh, video settings, it, it is at 1080p 60 frames per second. So I figured, okay, maybe it's the 1080, maybe it's the 60 frames per second. And here's another video, looks equally crappy. This rocket launch is 720p at 60 frames per second. So it really just can't do 60 frames per second, it seems like. And uh, if I take it back to windowed mode, though, it looks just fine. And in fact, uh, just to prove it, here's the same launch again in a wee little window. Here's yet another video. This is only 720p at 30 frames per second. And that jitteriness you see, uh, here's, a, here's a better example. That is not part of the video. That is not the capture card. That's actually what the computer's putting out. Um, and then if we go back to window mode, you can see the video plays just fine. And if you look at the CPU, it was spiking 100% uh, CPU while it was full screen. And uh, yeah, it is, at least with YouTube in Firefox, it is just really not suitable for a uh, full screen video. I guess all that remains now is to open this thing up and see what's inside, do a little tear down. All right, and here we go. I'm not really sure what to expect as far as, you know, what this is gonna have uh, closing it. In fact, it's not immediately apparent how to open it. I'm figuring that on under these uh, little foot pads, there might be screws. Yes, indeed, there are screws under these foot pads. I hate when they do this because you know, you gotta glue these foot pads back in place. I mean, they're kind of still sticky, but they're never quite adhesive enough to stay in place once you pop them off. Um, they do this a lot around laptop bezels. They'll put a little adhesive crap or a, or a uh, some kind of pad over the screws. Um, very annoying. But, like I said, I brought an assortment of tools. Uh, I even have some Torx drivers there because I wasn't sure, but these so far are just simple uh, Phillips head screws. Nothing too exciting. Uh, hmm. Or not. Let's use the knife of separation. Ah, okay, it was just clipped in there a little. Ah, there are two uh, little clips on the side here and here that uh, clip onto the cover. Right, I wanted to bring my uh, trusty little Sony action cam in here, uh, just so I can get close-ups of any parts that may be interesting inside of this thing. Okay, so, in fact, uh, I don't know if there's enough light anyway, so this might all be for naught, but there's, uh, you can see the circuit board in there. And uh, I'm assuming this is a retainer ring Oh, it looks like there's a whole plastic sub-assembly inside this aluminum tube. So, this aluminum tube should, in theory, slide away from the plastic casing. So I think I'm gonna have to pop, I think this top must pop off. It probably has a similar arrangement to that with the two little tabs. Oh, wait, there it goes. There it goes, okay. So, that slides off. This is definitely just a tube of aluminum. I'm assuming aluminum, it could I guess be some other sort of alloy, but it's lightweight, it's definitely not steel. Uh, oh, I didn't even take off the little protective coating on here. Uh, that's kind of irrelevant. So, it's a plastic cage that holds the, uh, the motherboard and all the rest of the components. Let's see if I can just, uh... oh, this uh, front board is actually attached. Ah, okay, there's a screw in here. I'm gonna try to get a shot of that for you. Um, there's a screw in there holding that board in place, sort of retainer screw. Uh, da -da. So, let's take this screw out. Just sort of drop it out the bottom. Very tiny little screw. So 
Now maybe that board will separate from the end of this. Yeah, now, now we're cooking. There we go. That's what I was looking for. Okay, we have a wire going up to the top. This is the top of the uh, unit. And I'm assuming this is the Wi-Fi antenna. I mean, or maybe this is a shielded wire and I think actually th this is the antenna that's on this. Uh, it's actually just a sticker, but I can see that it has something embedded in it. There's probably a little bit of metal just embedded in that sticker. Yeah, it's definitely an antenna. Um, so let's see, we have a little connector here, which goes to ah, the little uh, lithium battery for the BIOS, which is on the outside of the case. We have a little connector here, a little ribbon cable style connector. Ah, oh shoot, I lost the retainer clip. All right, well, we'll find that eventually. Um, so here, this is the front of it. It has the camera on the top and the power button on the bottom. And so the camera is connected via this uh, ribbon cable right here. And uh, this is for the power button and presumably the LED. And then, like I said, we got the little lithium cell there for the BIOS. Uh, let me just find a place to put that. I'll throw that over there. Okay, which liberates uh, the motherboard, which, yeah, this is definitely the wireless antenna. In fact, this is probably Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. It's got one of these, uh, I forget what these connectors are called, one of these little uh, tiny guys. So the cover comes off, put it there. So, yeah, it's a nice uh, compact little motherboard. Uh, good arrangements, I guess. Uh, it's got a little daughter card in here that holds the power connector and the TF card slot. And I'm bringing this camera over here. Interestingly, this this board is actually soldered in. Um, this, I thought it would just be a, a connector, but it, it can't be removed without desoldering these connections. Um, as far as the workmanship on this, all the solder joints uh, for the through-hole components and the surface mount components look very clean. I mean, this is actually a very neat looking board. Um, it doesn't look cheaply made. There's no random flux as if, you know, this was soldered. This definitely wasn't soldered by hand either. And a little bit of like flux on there. It's, it's really surprisingly uh, well done. Same with this side of the board. Um, yeah, and here's the little fan. Now, I should point out that basically the way the board sits in here, um, I think it was oriented roughly like this. No, nope, I'm sorry. I had connectors go out the back. So the board is oriented like this. And uh, the fan would be right at the top there. And as you can see, well, it would blow air over this heat sink. The air wouldn't really escape the chassis. Uh, you'd get a little bit blowing out the sides of the heat sink, I guess. But it's that being said, it's actually very tightly mated to the heat sink, as one would expect. And there's very few channels on the vertical end. Um, on the horizontal end is where most of the channels are. So really the air will be blowing out the sides of this uh, into the USB connectors on the one hand and uh, against the side of the case on the other. And I did see in the uh, product listing that the, uh, I believe the flash chips and the RAM are both underneath this heat sink. And it looks like there's a heat sink pad on there. It's not, uh, it's not the heat sink goop, like that compound they use. Um, but let's, uh, let's remove the heat sink and see what's under there. First, let's disconnect the fan power connector. Oh, wow. That's, uh, yeah, again, I mean, many elements of this seem quality, it seemed like pretty high quality. Um, this is a well-made connector. It actually locks in there really well so the fan cable doesn't slip out. And they did actually bother to tuck the cable in there neatly so that it wouldn't uh, get loose and get uh, fouled with the fan. So, um, yeah, I mean, overall, I'm, I'm fairly impressed with the construction of this thing. I really thought the whole thing would be made of plastic, not aluminum. Um, it's got the, that whole subframe. Now, the reason I ordered this in the first place, I should point out, is just because I thought it would be cool to have, I don't have an HTPC in my bedroom right now. In fact, I don't watch much TV in my bedroom, but occasionally I like to. And, uh, and by TV, of course, I mean content uh, on the internet, you know, Netflix, Hulu, Amazon, uh, YouTube, of course. So I thought this would be a, a good alternative to like a Roku or some other device like that, because I really like having a proper computer. Uh, so 
And let's see what we got here. We have, uh, of course, the CPU itself, which is nice and tiny. Um, there's a little bit of residue on here, a bit of uh, something on it. But you can see here, it made good contact. Um, let me just get this oriented. So it was oriented like that. You can see an indent where the CPU was. Uh, you can see an indent where I think this is the flash storage on that side, probably. Although that might be the RAM. I'll have to look at the uh, chips. But the point is, uh, one of them got really good contact where it's under this uh, connector. And the next one really did not, and then there's no other contact after that. And this chip here only got uh, partial contact. About maybe two-thirds of the chip were covered by the uh, heatsink. Which I don't necessarily know that it, it's critical that those are um, connected to the heatsink because usually they're not in an average computer but then again this it could get pretty hot in here since this is poorly ventilated all right it's got Samsung chips on here um, let me just clean off some of this compound there's a 4c chip ah so that's actually a 32 gig chip all right so this is the flash chip right here it's actually 32 gigs on that one chip which is pretty nice, so that must be a relatively new chip. I mean, I know they go higher in capacity than that nowadays, but the point is they're not using really old tech. In fact, there's a manufacturer date on here. Uh, I don't know if this was the design date or the manufacturer date. It's probably design date because it's actually um, it's actually on the PCB. Uh, so November 11th, 2015. So this hasn't even been sitting in a warehouse for all that long. Uh, this video is being made in March of 2016, so it's four months old. If that was if that was the design date, that's uh, that's pretty new actually. So then yeah, we got a bunch of uh, Samsung memory chips. I'm assuming each is well 512 megs. This has two gigs of RAM, and there's four of them. So yeah, um, not bad. So here we have. I think this is the uh, wireless chip. I think it's doing both the Wi-Fi and the Bluetooth. Uh, videos of course on board with the CPU. Um, I'm not sure what this little. Uh, module under here with the heat sink is. You know what? Give me one second. I will find out. So, um, yeah, that's uh, under that heat sink. That's the PMU. I'm assuming that means power management unit. Uh, I could be wrong about that, but it's got a lot of capacitors and resistors all around it. Uh, so I'm assuming that uh, takes five volts in. So I, I don't know. That probably puts out three volts, uh, one point whatever volts. I'm not really sure what uh, the components in here use exactly. Uh, so yeah, this is indeed the wireless uh, chip and this little guy here is audio. Uh, this connector is for the uh, camera. This connector here was for the uh, power button and LED. And this little connector was for the BIOS battery. And of course here we have for the CPU fan. And the CPU RAM and uh, flash chip fan. So yeah. Um, Overall, you know, like I said, good construction, but uh, just not a very useful computer. I said before that I'd circle back around to the network traffic from this computer, and I'm happy to say that there's really nothing to report. Well, I guess it would have made for a nice scandal on which to end the video if it were contacting tons of Russian and Chinese IP addresses, but all it talked to were IPs owned by Microsoft and various US-based CDNs. All normal stuff, in other words. I didn't truly expect this to be loaded with malware, though I suppose this really doesn't prove that it isn't, but at least initially it appears to be safe. So I guess the question on some of your minds is, should I buy this? And while I try to answer that, I'll show you some gratuitous shots of the computer and its internals for reference. The best answer I can give is maybe. I mean, like everything, it depends on what you use it for. The motherboard in this little guy could be really useful for an IoT or robotics project or for a car pewter or any other place where it could come in handy. The case is really well made and not unattractive, so if you very specifically need a tiny, nice looking and somewhat cheap computer for general productivity style work, then it's a good choice. However, with its Atom processor and integrated graphics, I would obviously not recommend it for gaming, aside from really basic 2D flash style games of course, and I wouldn't recommend it as an HTPC either. I know that Firefox with full screen YouTube is one of the most resource intensive ways to watch video, and that this CPU should be capable of full screen HD video in general, but probably not with much of anything running in the background. And remember that the RAM and flash storage are soldered onto the motherboard, so you're stuck with 2GB and 32GB respectively for life. Lastly, 
Well, it's possible that I just got unlucky. The CPU fan was pretty out of balance and vibrated badly for its size, which means that it's not going to live a long life. Fortunately, the tiny Atom runs relatively cool, but then again, there is not very good airflow through the case. And I don't know if this little guy is worth modding. Alright, well, thanks for watching my uh, review and teardown of the latest uh, Apple Mac Pro in cylindrical form. No, I'm just kidding, uh, this random ass computer from China. Um, yeah, if you want to see me take apart more stuff from China and give it a quick once over, uh, by all means, subscribe to my channel. I got more videos of this uh, same, same sort coming out. And uh, yeah, 